festivals. I missed them, right? Uh, I am Meredith Porters. I will be your moderator. Um, I feel like there are probably a lot of Dan's in the audience today. I thought as much um, for the uninitiated, the Dan's are the fan community that are largely responsible for bringing Baron and Talika to the screen. Um, but for those of you who are new to this experience, I just want to make sure you know what a like monumental event this is. This episode that we just watched is the culmination of like six years of hard work and hustle and fan support. And there are people all over the world who have been dying to watch the pilot episode of Baron and Toluca. And we just watched it here together on the big screen. So that is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so I am going to bring out the, uh, the co-creators and cast here in a second. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let you know that uh, with this audience, I think it makes sense to turn it over to audience questions a little bit earlier than I normally would. So start preparing your questions. I just want to remind you to please not be like that lady at Comic-Con-ish, you know? Just only ask one question, be cool, you know? But uh, other than that, um, okay, I think we are ready. So I uh, give a very warm welcome to the co-creators and cast of Baron Toluca. We've got Mahandra Delfino. Brendan Fair, Arthur Martinez, Skeeta Jenkins, and Micah Fowler. Hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I was just explaining to anyone who might be new to the Baron and Toluca journey uh, what a, a major deal this is. I would love to hear Mahandra and Brendan, you guys. <laughs> yeah, Micah, thank you for joining us. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys um, what, you know, what it's like watching this episode on the big screen with a crowd full of people after, after all of the work that has gone into bringing it here today. Well, yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's definitely surreal, you know, very exciting, very full circle. And um, we had fun. It was fun watching. I had fun. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> and and yeah, it, uh, it's, um, can you all hear me without the mic? Or do I need it for the video? Uh, I, I don't have a strong opinion about that. You can uh, do what you want. He has a very booming voice. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know yet. I'm still, <laughs> we literally just finished it like two days ago. Oh, wow. Um, so uh, it, it was a bit of a scramble, but I will say, yeah, coming back here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I think that sums <laughs> it up. Uh huh. Arthur, can you talk a little bit about how you uh, joined joined this journey? Uh, well, I have, I go way back with Mahandra, many many years. Mm -hmm. And um, when she was uh, casting this, she um, she said she was hearing my voice from Miles and asked if I would uh, put myself on tape and audition for the, for the role, and apparently they liked it, the tape, and uh, that's how I came on board. Skeeta and Micah, both of your characters are a little bit shrouded in mystery in this first episode. What can you tell us about these guys? Just don't say too much. Yes, w with permission, of course. Mine had a little bit of Green Mile-esque to it. So I kind of thought that was cool, and um, when I when I auditioned for it, I'm I live here in Texas, and uh, it was just pretty awesome when I got the call that I was going to get to be a part of it, and just watch, watching Roswell, knowing those two guys, uh, that kind of helped when my agent asked me, did I want to play the role? So that was pretty cool, and then getting to know them personally. Uh, they're pretty cool people as well, so it made it easy. And you guys were awesome. <laughs> if you don't know what you guys mean, they know the front two rows. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, 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 and 
Anything I want. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Toe in the company line. We like that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so I'm sure that you guys here have some questions. So uh, let's just raise your hand. And um, oh, I believe we do have a, a microphone in, in the aisle there. So if you want to start lining up, um, and as you guys do that, uh, Mahandra and Brendan, um, can you speak a little bit to your like collaborative process? What that looks like when you when you get together to make something like this? It's, it's surprisingly very smooth. It's you wouldn't think, but it works really well. Um, we're not sure. We're still trying to, you know, sort of reverse engineer why. Yeah, you don't want to ask too many questions. Sure, sure. <laughs> if it works, yeah, we don't. Leave it alone. Yeah, it's not broken. So, yeah. Um, you know, I think we have different skill sets um, in terms of how this whole thing came about, and I don't. We we also have, I think, different desires in terms of what we wanted to do during production and what kind of interested us. And those just luckily uh, kind of fall under kind of two camps. And so we're always talking to each other about what the other is doing, um, just for kind of an, an approval process and be like, hey, this is what I was thinking, this is what I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, she's kind of got one side of it and then I kind of got the other and you get to do your own thing mm -hmm. um, and, you know, but then obviously come together and both approve it. But it's, it just kind of works out just in terms of everything from production to wardrobe to logistics to camera to equipment to everything that we would require to do here. Um, we just kind of, what do you want to do? What are you good at? That's your camp. I'll do mine, and it worked out kind of nice. And, and there's also like an inherent trust. You know, there's times where you're not going to be able to get approval because you're going so fast or whatever. And it's like, oh, no, he's got it, you know, and hopefully vice versa. Um, so, yeah, it's just a nice, cohesive, sort of shared brain type, shared taste uh, collaboration, which is super helpful. That's great, and um, I know that obviously with the level of fan involvement that you guys had with bringing this to the screen, there's gotta be a sort of tricky balance between your obligations to the fans and your obligations to yourselves as storytellers. Can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, I think the, tri the only tricky thing about it is how, how to give all of us what we wanted and loved so much about Roswell while keeping it meta and um, just fulfilling those aspects that we all loved without it being just a, a straight rip-off <laughs> or spin-off or whatever. I'd say that was really the only feeling of like obligation and stress. Yeah, I, I think the easy thing there was what we love about Michael and Maria on, on Roswell was the same things the fans really enjoyed. And so then if we could kind of package that in a different way, it was never, I mean, it's first and foremost, uh, we love you guys, but it's always about what we want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's For good. numero uno but over the, here. But the best part was that 95 or 99% of the time is what the fans really want as well. And that's what makes it easy where um, it's, it's, a, it's a relationship that's kind of on, that same level and so we just have to ask ourselves what we want and um, for the most part it kind of works out and then if it doesn't at least we did what we wanted to do yeah exactly and also we you know we can only use ourselves as as the compass we yeah. don't live in everyone's brain and you know so we did sort of stay true to that as the the true north because it really is the only thing that you can go off of but the hope was that it was very much in tandem with everybody else's Desires. I think it was, right guys? Yeah.
well, what can uh, this audience of new and old dance uh, do to, to you know, bring Baron and Toluca to the next step? What comes next? Well, now we, you know, we sell the darn thing. Um, we, would, we tried before, but it was always, um, there was a huge resistance um, on the sort of suits side of things um, to pay any kind of homage to Michael and Maria and to Roswell and um, a disbelief also in the power of the fandom. And fools. <laughs> fools, exactly. Just to show of hands, how many here actually worked on the production? Oh, wow. <laughs> amazing. Oh my God, that is amazing. Wow. Yeah, they actually came down and helped out. That is, that is so very cool. I think we have time for one audience question. So if you yeah. Hi. Um, I work in post production and, one of the, and We're I'm so a sorry. producer. <laughs> that would have been nice to know. Yeah, we'd love to. <laughs> Love to talk hey, to you hey, after, hey. and uh, no problem at all. Tell you about Mercury and retrograde. <laughs> Apparently, it's a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the first question was: that I wasn't privy to your whole journey. What was the budget for this pilot, and how much? I, I was just listening to the music too. I was like, your music budget must have been huge. The music how is so you, good. Oh my goodness! The music it's a festival, you know, licensing. So it's not. That's not going to get to go oh, okay. on TV. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But our budget. Yeah, our budget is, uh, was about, it ended up being about 250K. Cool. It looks very, very good. Uh, <laughs> you guys did oh, good. so much with that. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it, yeah we, we got a lot out of it. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting journey in post. Yeah, and this is also our, our sound mix just for the festival, but we have a professional one coming soon. No, it, it is. But in order to do the projector situation... But yeah, it's uh, we stretched the dollar, I think. Copy that. <laughs> Looks good. Sounded good yeah, too. So for, oh, good. For what you're talking about? Yes. You know, this, this, all the score is is ours, but the songs, you know, we want to present it in the best light, and obviously, it's not going to be televised. You know, there's no network and all that stuff, and so uh, when we go to sell it, we want to kind of sell the vibe and everything that we're selling and so and ideally yeah we'd get that yeah, budget yeah, yeah, get those yeah. leonard cohen yeah. songs yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the little beastie boys i was like wow okay <laughs> yeah cool well thank you it was great <laughs> thank you all so much let's give a huge huge round of applause everyone in the audience spread the word i mean many of you already have but, but keep talking about it tell everyone how much you loved baron and toluca and let's get this on the screen so we can watch more episodes yay yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, do, you, do we have time? I don't see anyone telling me no. Yeah, all right, we have time for a couple more questions. Yay, okay, excellent. Hi, my name is Laura, and my question is for Mahandra. Ooh. Have you, well, it's a two-parter. Oh, uh, have you always wanted to write sci-fi, and what kind of research did you do? Because it was really impressive, amazing. Oh, it was, ex I mean, first of all, I had this idea, it, more of like a, <laughs> like an alien, <laughs> this sounds terrible, guys, okay? like a alien meet Joe Black when I was like 21. And then this sort of started like, so it was a long, long time to research, you know? Um, I love science fiction. Um, I love it all. But I just knew I wanted to write and write what I like. So it's really just that kind of a focus. Okay, thank she's, you. She's pretty humble. She has skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Hi, I was, uh, first, congratulations. And I was curious if you could talk a little bit about the evolution of the fundraising campaign and the role that social media uh, played in it. I found that really fascinating to follow. Yeah, I mean, we knew, you know, well, we didn't know, we took a chance. When we first had this idea, we were wondering how we could possibly do it. And so, well, we were wondering if we should do it, first of all. And that's when we made the first trailer uh, back in the day, and then we, and then we thought we wanted to do it after that, and that was good enough. And then um, we, we tried to sell it after that point, and we needed a trailer. Um, we thought we needed, I don't, I don't talk good. Uh, <laughs> Disagree. So when talk I'm, well. When, talk you know, good. when I'm in pitch meetings, I bet. Um, it, it, it doesn't, I can't ever express really one. I just want to show people. Um, all the time in, in kind of whatever capacity. And so, you know, it was just one of those where I was like, 
we wanted this kind of sci-fi eerie feel, which we didn't have in the first trailer. And I said, well, let's just make another one so we can do that. So that was the evolution of that. And we thought maybe that would put us over the top in some meetings. And we didn't take that many, but we took enough and we went, and I just got tired of it. And I was just like, fuck it, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. I'm not gonna go ask people um, to make the show that I wanna make. Um, and we kind of both agreed on that. And we said, and there was enough, we thought we had enough fandom based on kind of a social media and obviously our history with Roswell and the, and the campaign where we said, let's just, let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can put together a fundraiser and let's see how many people are out there. Yeah, we'll give ourselves a year. Yeah, and it'll give us a sense of whether you know, there's enough people that really want to see it, you know, and if they have, you know, if we can raise enough money to do something that we think um, is deserving of that. And so we took the chance and we, uh, and we, and we put it out there, but it, it was more of us also wanting to, to have total control um, over it in the sense of doing, you know, what we wanted. Obviously it's a very collaborative effort with everyone else. Um, but we didn't have a studio or, you know, money men or, you know, women to listen to. And so we could kind of make the choices we wanted and we thought we were best suited for that given all you guys and kind of knowing, um, what you guys liked. And so we, we started that Indiegogo campaign and we, figured out what we were gonna sell and how much we could make in this and kind of ran some numbers and um, you guys all came through and that's that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last question and you know, make it good, keep it short. Okay, sorry. Hi, oh, no. Hi. my name is Ramsey. My name is Ramsey Michelle, and I just have to say real quick, I promise I will. If I'm anyone like the Comic Con-ish person, I'm like the person with you the know. worm. I'll let you know. I'm like, like, you guys are my worms. Um, so I appreciate you, and I, it's like, I wish you could know what's going on inside my heart right now. It's like, like, Beatles level, but I'm trying to contain myself, so we're, <laughs> we're good. Okay, so my question... <laughs> Did I say that I love you? It's fine. Okay, so my question is, um, oh, who did the, did, did one of y'all do the art for the branding? I think it's so cool. Um, and oh, it's like, how cool. did you, did you come up with inspiration for that? Or was it just like in your head already? It's all tied to like a much bigger backstory, you know, all the emblems and things. So it kind of had to stick to some rules. Okay. But it was a long <laughs> labor not even of love. No, it was of love, but it, yeah, it was a process. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, Brendan. Uh, yeah, uh, one last thing. Um, there, uh, there are posters that each of you can grab one. On the Very floor. cool. For free. <laughs> and thank you for coming. We love you all. And guys, really, I mean, this is because of you. And this whole thing is what happens when you're constantly told no and no and no over again and you're just not gonna take that answer and you get the whole group together and you just show them how it's done. That's all because of you guys and we are so eternally grateful. I, you know, I don't wanna cry, I haven't cried in years. Um, might happen right now, but we really just thank you, truly. Thank you yeah, for So give there. yourselves a round of applause. Thank Micah you. Fowler, Skeeta Jenkins, Brennan Fair, and Mahondra Delfino.